I love violence, man. I'll gladly split a guy's skull open, but I'm not mean about it. It's 2023 meet, and Kelvin Gaslam is only 31 years old, and he's coming into a contest. Having lost five of six yet is a favorite, and I'm curious to get your perspective on this one because as the video opened up, Chris Curtis, we know, is a guy who loves violence. He is definitely going to be bringing it against Kelvin Gaslam, and you got to imagine the counterpunching and the Overall, stand-up acumen is what Chris Curtis will be leaning on in this contest, but we know that Calvin Gaslam won the Ultimate Fighter, did so with a lot of wrestling, wrestled collegiately at Arizona State, and is a guy who has a supreme wrestling game when he chooses to utilize it. He just sometimes decides not to, and my just main question for this one, Meet, is first of all, who are you going with? Are you going to ride Chris Curtis, who has won 9 of 10? He's been upsetting a lot of guys as a sizable dog and really awakening a lot of MMA fans as to how good this guy is and potentially how slept on he was for too long in the sense that his UFC shot took a little bit too long to arrive and once he got that opportunity he capitalized more so than I think anyone has in a long time so props to Chris Curtis for that but I think it just speaks to he probably should have been in the UFC a little bit earlier but nonetheless last time Kelvin got a win was Back at UFC 258 against Ian Heinish, he used a lot of his wrestling in that fight and was able to emerge with a unanimous victory. So my question to you is, are you picking the milkman Chris Curtis? And if so, do you think he's going to have to be worrying about the takedowns of Kelvin Gaslam? Or is Kelvin going to show up, bite down on the mouthpiece, come to swing and bang and likely lose as a result? Who are you taking and how's this fight materialize? Yeah, uh, this is an interesting fight because... I'm not really a fan of either one of these guys. You know, Milk Boy definitely, you know, he's a fan of the channel, so shout out to you. Um, but I always tend to pick against Milkman. Uh, and this is the one off, uh, you know, where I actually think he's going to decimate Kelvin Fatstillim. Fatstillim's been just chewing Cheetos. I mean, I saw a picture where he had like a, I don't know what it was, something growing on his face and he's missing teeth. Like, what happened? He had a pull out of his fight. He's been bailing on fights. He's been so inactive and so all over the place. I just, I can't believe that this is Kelvin Gaslam that knocked out, you know, Mike Bisbing, you know. I, I just don't see it at all. It's foolish to think that Kelvin is the Kelvin we knew pre-Izzy. I think Izzy kind of took his soul, and uh, he's, you know, Mr. Cheeto Man, and Milk Boy is Cheeto. about to absolutely decimate him and, you know, give him some soggy Cheetos with that milk, I guess you could say. Um, I think it'll stay on the feet. I think Chris's boxing is a little crisper. Um, it will be interesting if Kelvin tries to grapple, but let's be honest, who's taking Chris Curtis down? Chris Curtis has actually looked great. His takedown defense is phenomenal. Look at those ears. You know he's got BJJ, so we ain't worried there. Um, I like that he's a dog, too. This just screams, in my opinion, this is a basic intelligence test. He's plus money. He's active. He looks good. Great takedown defense. What has Kelvin shown other than the fact he likes Cheetos? I don't know. It's a no-brainer, in my opinion. Uh, Milk Boy, the action man, Chris Curtis, KO or decision dominantly. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, it's tough for sure, right? Because, like, the recent iterations of Kelvin Gaslam throughout the last couple of years haven't been his best, right? And he's a guy who, when he is at his best, is clearly talented, right? I mean, we got to remember that fight where you described as Izzy taking his soul. That fight was 2-2 two to two going into the fifth round, and Izzy went sicko mode and just decided to, I think he would be utter in that moment, I'm ready to die right now. Like, he went... He went full psycho and had to really dig deep from the doldrums to pull that one out against Kelvin Gaslam. And maybe as a result, that war, or that accumulation of damage really just did wear on Kelvin Gaslam. Like when I saw that he was only 31 years old, like I had that kind of blew my mind and made me think of him as a for the MMA game, a kind of old 31, right? Because he absorbed a lot of strikes in that one. And ever since that fight, it hasn't been great, right? He's lost four or five some close losses, right? The uh, fights against Jared Cannonier, the fights against uh, Robert Whitaker, like they were somewhat competitive, but I guess clear losses for him. So it hasn't been great, no matter how you spin it for him. And he did lose that split decision to Darren Till. We were at that fight. 
I remember that fight being pretty close. I was kind of unsure who really won it. Not sure either guy really uh, deserved to emerge victorious. But nonetheless, it's been rough, right? So I was also mind blown with the odds in the sense that given all that context, Kelvin Gaslam is still the slight favor in this one. And if we look at topology, this is one of those instances where uh, the line is showing one thing, but topology is pretty bullish on the other direction. And Chris Curtis is garnering 71%, majority base for that decision, but there's a decent chunk of brown for that KO. That KO chunk I want to focus on specifically. Do you think that there's a pathway for Curtis to get a finish in this one? Because sometimes, like, the... It's not necessarily the power of Chris Curtis that will put guys out, start you one punch, but he's so accurate with his punches and lands such a flurry of them. Like, I, I think of that fight against Brendan Allen and even against Joaquin Buckley where, yes, he ended up getting that gnarly KO at the end, but it was a lot of accumulation throughout the contest before that KO sleeper. So is there a pathway where Kelvin gets absolutely slept by your boy, Action Man, or do you think the Milkman likely wins a decision? Yeah, no, I, I think he 100% sleeps Kelvin Gastelum. Um, how I put Kelvin Gastelum in the Dominic Reyes, you know, JV baseball coach, uh, you know, genre where it looked unstoppable, had a great tear, and then the sports psychology and the mentalness just like it's almost like he, he's got the skill, he's got the package, he's got it all, but the mental aspect isn't getting there and Dominic Reyes is really you know lacking in that as we've seen but Kelvin's kind of in the same boat since Dominic Reyes fought John Jones hasn't been the same since Kelvin Gaston fought Izzy has not been the same sadly uh you know he's there but you know uh a lot of things are in the brain and we can't really control that so Chris Curtis's confidence all-time high. Chris Curtis is a very strong, you know, he's an anime weeb, you know, he believes in higher power of the anime jujitsu and all that stuff, you know, so he's going to summon, you know, his summon jitsu and all this cool stuff he likes to talk about. That's that's cute and all, but Kelvin Gastelum is just eating Cheetos, man. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe how bad this is going to be for Kelvin, and then I think Kelvin's going to beat KFC, and maybe he'll get the winner of Mike Perry versus Luke Rockhold. Honestly, I'd be pretty down with that. I actually kind of think that Kelvin would be a beast in BKFC because the dude does punch hard. He's got that gnarly left hand. And if he, you know, rarely decides to wrestle in him anyway, so might as well head over to BKFC and call winner on that matchup for sure. But you speak to the higher power of the anime jujitsu that the action man Chris Curtis possesses. And I'm kind of with you in the sense that, like, Chris Curtis keeps getting better. He's always motivated. I like how he rebounded off that loss from Jack the Joker, where that was a fight, co-main event, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way with his behavior in that fight, how Jack Hermanson just totally outclassed him, just schooled him with his footwork, and Chris Curtis was essentially upset about it, and I think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but you gotta give him some credit, and shortly after that, he's able to rebound with that win against Joaquin Buckley, and that was a fight where a lot of people thought Buckley was going to win, Buckley was the favorite, and... Curtis came through as a decent dog and picked up performance of the night. So to me, that spoke to a guy whose mental is definitely all there and contrasted with Kelvin Gaslam, who, you know, you, you hate to question any guy's mentality or devotion or what, but I think that the fighter we've seen from Kelvin Gaslam in the last three years looks very consistent. Like if you turn on any of the la Kelvin Gaslam's last five fights, they look pretty similar as far as what his skills are and Rarely do you see as much improvement as growth as you do like a guy with Chris Curtis where you just watched, I mean, some of his early UFC fights where he was already picking up wins and looking good. Contrasted with his most recent fight where he looks even better, even more focused, even more hungry, and his skills just exponentially increased. So because of that reason, I'm with you. Because of the confidence, because of the skill development in the last few years, I'm going to go with Chris Curtis. However, I do think, Meet, that there's a pathway for Kelvin to resurrect his career, figure out a way forward, and he needs to utilize the wrestling if he wants to do that because last time he had success, he mixed it in, he was able to land some strikes, but also threatened with takedowns, and when he's putting his complete game together like he did on the Ultimate Fighter, like he did against Uriah Hall to win the entire series, Kelvin Gaslam is a top fighter, so it's can he strain all together, will he decide to, I'm with you in that he probably doesn't, so going to go Chris Curtis, but I'm going to go by decision. I, I do think Kelvin, like, he's tough to put out. That dude, like, is 
I don't know, you, you can hit him with a lot of shots and he somehow springs forward and is still somewhat coherent. So I'm going Chris Curtis, but I'm going to go by decision. Any last thoughts? No, I like that. And yeah, it definitely could happen because, yeah, I mean, he is a tough guy. These Mexican fighters, they are no joke. They have a chin from heck. But I don't know, man. I have zero faith in Kelvin until proven otherwise. So I will go with that. Throw in the comments who you taking. You taking the action man, milk man, or cheetah boy?